Lucy and her team here have, and I have been discussing since the meeting in February about the possibility of a Caribbean sea level and flooding institute to be based here. As I think you probably know that, but just to, we um, obviously we're already from the hurricanes Irma and Maria a year ago, almost two years ago now, right here rebuilding. And of course the challenge is to rebuild higher uh, to deal with storms, tides, and sea level rise, and people talk about that, but actually we're not quite looking at the big picture yet. So that's the idea here, is how do we plan better for the future? Extreme tide events around the world are becoming a more of a problem, and all of those things are being elevated because of rising sea level. But rising sea level has a very different character. It's like a drip filling the bucket. It can't rise too quickly. So a few facts about sea level. Most people actually start with a common misunderstanding thinking that the melting icebergs add to sea level. They have no effect. The glaciers are where sea level rise comes from. When a glacier calves off into a new iceberg, that's like adding another ice cube to our glass of water. That does raise the level of liquid. The problem with sea level is that there's enough ice on Greenland that if we're all to melt, sea level would be 24 feet higher worldwide. And if you looked at this carefully, you'd probably see an upward slope. This is not a straight line even without the, the bumps up and down. It's actually got a little bit of a curvature. And now the last most recent rate, if we look at put kind of put a straight edge to that, that's five millimeters a year. This is doubling. This is exponential growth. 1.5 three, essentially six. This is a steepening, which is exactly what we'd expect because of some dynamics or physics about ice melting. And that one of them has now gone up like a rocket ship. The question is how long does it take for that to translate into warming? And how long does the warming take to translate into melting the ice and raising sea level? Would they, right? I mean, that's, that's the puzzle here. It's not gonna happen this week. It's not gonna happen this decade, but we're seeing early evidence. We have to do all three simultaneously. Slow the warming through the energy conservation of renewable energies, et cetera, getting carbon in the atmosphere. Be prepared for strange weather, like extreme uh, storms, and slowly rising sea level. We have to do all three. It's not which one you like. 2060, 40 years from now, 41 years from now, that's realistic because most buildings and infrastructure can last that long, so we should be working on that now. But the idea that beyond 2060, in those other 40 years, that we could get between 31 inches to 81 inches, two and a half feet to seven feet, that's stunning, right? To summarize, sea level rise is now unstoppable. Even if we stopped the greenhouse gas emissions, if we kept it at 415, even if we found ways to suck some of it out of the air, and we went to zero fossil fuels, we're still gonna get sea level rise. The 93% of the heat that we've trapped goes into the ocean, and the oceans are warmer. The amount of energy we put in the ocean, and an interesting visual statistic, since I like these visual story, is that the amount of heat we're of excess heat we're putting in the ocean every day is equivalent to five of the atomic bombs dropped to end World War II on Hiroshima. Every second, 24 hours a day, which is 500,000 a day, that's the amount of heat energy that's been calculated to be added to the ocean every day at an extraordinary level. Maybe they can take a problem and turn it into a local asset 